King Egbert ruled over the Kingdom of Wessex from 827 to 839, marking a crucial period in the consolidation of Anglo-Saxon power in England. His reign saw significant military successes, including the subjugation of neighboring kingdoms and the establishment of Wessex as the dominant force in southern England. Egbert's reign laid the foundation for future English kings, setting the stage for the eventual unification of England under a single monarchy. King Ethelwulf, son of Egbert, ascended the throne of Wessex in 839 and faced numerous challenges during his reign. Despite facing Viking invasions and internal power struggles, Ethelwulf displayed resilience and diplomatic prowess. He successfully defended his kingdom, maintained alliances with other Anglo-Saxon realms, and secured the succession of his sons, including the future king, Alfred the Great. Ethelwulf's reign contributed to the preservation of Anglo-Saxon rule in the face of external threats and laid the groundwork for his son's renowned reign. King Ethelbald's reign from 858 to 860 was short but eventful. He was the second son of Ethelwulf. He faced internal opposition and controversy due to his marital choices, including marrying his father's widow. Despite these challenges, Ethelbald managed to maintain stability within his kingdom and continued to assert Wessex's dominance over other Anglo-Saxon realms. His reign, although brief, showcased his ability to navigate complex political situations and maintain the authority of the Wessex monarchy. King Ethelbert's reign from 860 to 866 was marked by significant Viking invasions and ongoing conflicts. He was the brother of Ethelbald. Despite facing numerous challenges, Ethelbert displayed military prowess and effectively defended Wessex against Viking assaults. His reign saw a continued effort to fortify and protect his kingdom, setting the stage for the future reign of his younger brother, King Alfred the Great, who would ultimately lead the successful defense against the Viking incursions. King Ethelred I's reign from 866 to 871 was a turbulent period in Anglo-Saxon history characterized by relentless Viking attacks. He succeeded his brother Ethelbert. Despite his efforts to repel the invaders, Ethelred struggled to maintain stability and faced significant setbacks. His reign was marked by continuous Viking incursions, resulting in territorial losses and a deteriorating security situation that would ultimately shape the events leading up to the reign of his younger brother, Alfred the Great. King Alfred the Great's reign from 871 to 899 was a transformative period in English history. He was the son of Ethelwulf. He was faced with relentless Viking invasions, Alfred demonstrated remarkable military leadership and strategic prowess, successfully defending Wessex and initiating counter-offensives. His reign saw significant cultural, educational, and administrative reforms, including the promotion of learning, the establishment of a legal code, and the construction of fortified towns known as burrs. Alfred's legacy as a visionary leader and defender of Anglo-Saxon England earned him the epithet, the Great, and laid the foundation for a united and resilient English kingdom. King Edward the Elder's reign from 899 to 924 marked a period of expansion and consolidation for the Anglo-Saxon kingdom. He was the son of Alfred the Great. Building upon the foundation laid by his father, Alfred the Great, Edward continued to push back Viking invasions and expand his realm. Through strategic military campaigns and alliances, he successfully integrated and subjugated neighboring territories bringing about the unification of England under his rule and setting the stage for further Anglo-Saxon dominance. King Athelstan's reign from 924 to 939 marked a significant milestone in English history. He was the son of Edward the Elder. As the first king to be recognized as the ruler of all England, Athelstan solidified the concept of a unified kingdom. He expanded English territory through successful military campaigns, including decisive victories over Viking and Celtic forces. Athelstan's reign laid the groundwork for a centralized monarchy and set the stage for England's emergence as a dominant power in the British Isles. King Edmund's reign from 939 to 946 was unfortunately brief and marked by turmoil and conflict. He succeeded his half-brother Ethelstan. 
he faced significant Viking invasions, leading to ongoing battles and territorial losses. Despite his efforts to defend the kingdom, Edmund's reign was cut short when he was assassinated, leaving a legacy of bravery and resilience in the face of Viking aggression. King Edred's reign from 946 to 955 was a period of both internal and external challenges. The son of Edward the Elder, he faced rebellions from powerful nobles and dealt with persistent Viking incursions. Despite these difficulties, Edred maintained the integrity of the kingdom, successfully suppressing revolts and consolidating royal authority. His reign laid the groundwork for stability and prepared the stage for the eventual reign of his nephew, Edgar the Peaceful. King Edwig's reign from 955 to 959 was marked by controversy and internal strife. The eldest son of Edmund I he faced conflicts with the church and incurred the disapproval of powerful clergy due to his questionable personal conduct. Edwig's reign was marred by a lack of political stability and ultimately led to a division within the kingdom, with his reign ending prematurely and his brother Edgar taking the throne. King Edgar's reign from 959 to 975 was a period of stability and prosperity in Anglo-Saxon England. He was the youngest son of Edmund I. Known as Edgar the Peaceful, he successfully consolidated the kingdom and maintained peaceful relations with neighboring regions. Edgar's reign witnessed the enforcement of laws, the promotion of monastic reform, and the establishment of a strong central government, setting the stage for a golden era of cultural and political achievements in England. King Edward the Martyr's brief reign from 975 to 978 was marked by political intrigue and his tragic assassination. He was the eldest son of Edgar. As a young and inexperienced king, Edward faced opposition from powerful nobles who sought to seize power. His untimely death and martyrdom solidified his legacy as a symbol of piety and righteousness, and his reign serves as a reminder of the volatile and treacherous nature of politics during that era. King Æthelred II's reign from 978 to 1016 was plagued by persistent Viking invasions and internal conflicts. He was the second son of Edgar. His nickname, the Unready, is a misinterpretation of the Old English term, Unraid, which means, ill-advised. Æthelred's attempts to buy off Viking raiders with large payments, known as Danegeld, proved ineffective, leading to further invasions and widespread unrest. His reign is characterized by a lack of effective leadership and the eventual loss of England's sovereignty to Danish rule under Swain Fortbeard and later his son, Canute the Great. King Edmund Ironside's reign in 1016 was a brief but significant period in English history. He was the son of Æthelred II. He valiantly fought against the invading forces of Canute the Great, displaying military prowess and determination. Despite his efforts to resist Danish rule, the death of Edmund Ironside in the same year marked the end of his reign and the establishment of CNUT as the undisputed King of England. King Canute the Great's reign from 1016 to 1035 was a transformative period in English history. The son of Swain Forkbeard. As a Danish ruler, Canute successfully united England, Denmark, and Norway, establishing a vast North Sea Empire. He demonstrated effective governance, fostered peace and stability, and gained respect from both his subjects and foreign powers. Canute's reign represents a remarkable era of consolidation, cultural exchange, and effective rule that left a lasting impact on English history. King Harold I's reign from 1035 to 1040 was a tumultuous period marked by internal power struggles and external threats. He was the son of King Canute. He faced opposition from powerful nobles and the threat of Viking invasions. Despite his efforts to maintain control, Harold's reign was cut short by his untimely death, leaving a legacy of political instability and setting the stage for the subsequent Norman conquest of England. King Harthur Canute's brief reign from 1040 to 1042 was marked by a period of consolidation and conflict. As the son of Canute the Great, he aimed to solidify his rule over England and Denmark. However, his reign was marred by tensions with the English nobility, heavy taxation, and a legacy of oppressive policies. 
Hartha Canute's sudden death without an heir further contributed to the instability that ultimately led to the Norman conquest of England. King Edward the Confessor's reign from 1042 to 1066 was a period of relative peace and stability in England. The son Ethelred the Unready, he was the last king of the House of Wessex. Known for his piety and religious devotion, Edward fostered a revival of English culture and art, including the construction of Westminster Abbey. However, his lack of a clear heir and the ensuing succession dispute set the stage for the Norman conquest, ultimately leading to the end of Anglo-Saxon rule in England. King Harold II's reign in 1066 was tumultuous and short-lived. Following the death of Edward the Confessor, Harold was crowned king by the Witten, despite having no royal bloodline and faced immediate challenges. He successfully defended England against an invasion by Harold Hardrada of Norway but was ultimately defeated by William the Conqueror at the Battle of Hastings, resulting in the Norman conquest and the end of Anglo-Saxon rule in England. King William the Conqueror's reign from 1066 to 1087 marked a transformative era in English history. Following his victory at the Battle of Hastings, William established Norman rule in England. His reign was characterized by extensive reforms, including the compilation of the Doomsday Book, the restructuring of the feudal system, and the construction of strategic castles. William's rule left a lasting impact on English society, politics, and culture, laying the foundation for the Norman dynasty and shaping the course of English history. King William Rufus's reign from 1087 to 1100 was marked by political turbulence and controversy. He was the son of William the Conqueror. He faced challenges to his authority, including conflicts with the church and rebellions by powerful nobles. Additionally, his reign was overshadowed by the mysterious circumstances surrounding his untimely death, fueling speculation and conspiracy theories. He also never married or produced an heir, adding speculation to his sexuality. Despite these challenges, William Rufus maintained the centralization of power and continued the Norman legacy in England. King Henry I's reign from 1100 to 1135 was a period of stability and significant administrative achievements. He was the fourth son of William the Conqueror. He implemented legal and financial reforms, including the issuing of the Charter of Liberties, which laid the groundwork for later constitutional developments. Henry I's reign also saw successful military campaigns, expansion of royal authority, and the securing of his daughter Matilda as his heir, though succession disputes after his death would lead to a tumultuous period of civil war known as the Anarchy. King Stephen's reign from 1135 to 1154 was marked by political unrest and a prolonged civil war known as the Anarchy. His mother was the daughter of William the Conqueror. His disputed claim to the throne and subsequent conflicts with Empress Matilda led to a period of chaos, with rival factions vying for control of England. The reign of Stephen was characterized by instability, a weakened monarchy, and a breakdown in law and order, laying the foundation for significant political and social repercussions in the years to come. King Henry II's reign from 1154 to 1189 was a transformative period in English history. He was great-grandson of William the Conqueror. He implemented a series of legal reforms, known as the Assize of Clarendon, which strengthened royal authority and laid the foundation for the common law system. Henry II also faced significant challenges, including conflicts with Thomas Becket, the Archbishop of Canterbury, which resulted in Becket's murder. His reign witnessed the expansion of royal power, the establishment of a centralized administration, and significant territorial acquisitions, solidifying the Angevin Empire and leaving a lasting impact on English governance. King Richard I, known as Richard the Lionheart, reigned from 1189 to 1199 and is remembered for his chivalry and military prowess. He was the third son of Henry II. His reign was defined by his involvement in the Third Crusade, where he earned his legendary reputation as a fearless warrior. Despite spending much of his reign abroad, Richard's absence and heavy taxation to fund his campaigns led to political and economic challenges in England, while his capture and subsequent ransom created a significant financial burden. Richard's reign left a lasting legacy as a symbol of medieval knightly valor and the romantic ideal of a warrior king. 
King John's reign from 1199 to 1216 was a troubled period marked by political turmoil and conflict. He was the fourth child of Henry II. He faced numerous challenges, including disputes with his barons that culminated in the signing of the Magna Carta in 1215, which limited royal power and established certain rights for the nobility. John's reign was further marred by military failures, including the loss of Normandy, resulting in a tarnished reputation as a king and a legacy of discontent that influenced future English governance. King Henry III's reign from 1216 to 1272 was a lengthy period characterized by political instability and tensions. He was the son of King John. He ascended to the throne as a child and faced power struggles with his nobles throughout his reign. Henry's reign witnessed significant conflicts, including the Barons' Wars, and his lavish spending and mismanagement of finances further fueled discontent. Despite these challenges, Henry's reign also saw the development of English Gothic architecture and the promotion of cultural and artistic patronage, leaving a lasting impact on medieval England. King Edward I's reign from 1272 to 1307 was marked by strong leadership, military successes, and significant legal reforms. He was the son of Henry III. He embarked on ambitious campaigns to conquer Wales and subdue Scotland, solidifying English dominance over both regions. Edward I's reign also saw the implementation of legal reforms, including the Statute of Westminster, which helped to centralize and standardize English law. His reign is often remembered as a period of royal authority and expansion, leaving a lasting impact on the governance and legal system of England. King Edward II's reign from 1307 to his deposition in 1327 was marked by political turmoil, military failures, and strained relations with the nobility. He was the fourth son of Edward I. He faced challenges from rebellious barons, including his own wife, Isabella, and her lover Roger Mortimer. Edward's lack of effective governance and his close association with unpopular favorites contributed to his downfall, resulting in his forced abdication and subsequent tragic death. His reign serves as a cautionary tale of a weak and ineffective king unable to navigate the complexities of medieval politics. King Edward III's reign from 1327 to 1377 marked a period of significant military achievements and cultural resurgence in England. He was the son of Edward II. He successfully reclaimed territories in France, initiating the Hundred Years' War, and was hailed as a military hero for victories such as the Battle of Crecy and the capture of Calais. Edward III's reign also witnessed a flourishing of English literature and the rise of the chivalric ideal, leaving a lasting impact on English history and culture. King Richard II's reign from 1377 to his deposition in 1399 was marked by political instability, conflicts with nobles, and a troubled relationship with the common people. He was the son of Edward III. His young ascension to the throne and ineffective rule led to a power struggle with ambitious nobles, culminating in the deposition and subsequent death of Richard II. His reign represents a turbulent period in English history and a shift towards more centralized authority under the House of Lancaster. King Henry IV's reign from 1399 to 1413 was a period of political challenges and ongoing conflict. He was the son of John of Gaunt, third son of Edward III. He came to power through the deposition of Richard II, which resulted in rebellions and attempts to restore the deposed king. Henry IV faced constant threats to his authority and had to navigate the complexities of maintaining stability within the realm. Despite these difficulties, his reign laid the foundation for the long-lasting Lancastrian dynasty in England. King Henry V's reign from 1413 to 1422 was defined by his military achievements and legendary victory at the Battle of Agincourt during the Hundred Years' War. He was the son of Henry IV. He successfully reinvigorated English ambitions in France and secured significant territorial gains. Henry V's reign was characterized by his strategic prowess, charismatic leadership, and efforts to establish a strong and stable monarchy, earning him a reputation as one of England's most celebrated warrior kings. 
King Henry VI's reign from 1422 to his deposition in 1461 was marked by political instability, factional conflicts, and the outbreak of the Wars of the Roses. He was the son of Henry V. As a child king, Henry's reign was initially controlled by regents, and his weak rule allowed noble factions to vie for power, leading to a breakdown in royal authority. The ongoing struggles for control between the houses of Lancaster and York eventually resulted in Henry's deposition, setting the stage for further tumultuous events in English history. King Edward IV's reign from 1461 to 1483 was a period of significant political upheaval and military triumphs. He was the son of Richard Duke of York and Cicely Neville. He emerged victorious in the Wars of the Roses, securing the Yorkist claim to the throne. Edward IV's reign was marked by relative stability, economic prosperity, and the establishment of a strong central authority. However, conflicts within his own family and the premature death of Edward IV would ultimately lead to further instability and in the subsequent reign of his young son, Edward V. King Edward V's reign in 1483 was a tragically short and turbulent period in English history. He was the eldest son of Edward IV. As a child king, his reign was overshadowed by power struggles within the royal family, particularly between his uncle, Richard, Duke of Gloucester, who eventually took the throne as Richard III. Edward V's deposition and subsequent disappearance, along with his brother, the princes in the tower, remain shrouded in mystery and controversy, leaving an enduring intrigue that has captivated historians and the public for centuries. King Richard III's reign from 1483 to 1485 was a period marked by controversy and political instability. He was the brother of Edward IV. He ascended the throne amidst the turbulent aftermath of the Wars of the Roses and faced opposition from those who questioned the legitimacy of his claim. Richard III's reign is best known for his defeat and death at the Battle of Bosworth Field, which ended the Plantagenet dynasty and marked the beginning of the Tudor era under Henry VII. His brief reign remains a subject of intense historical debate and fascination. King Henry VII's reign from 1485 to 1509 was a period of consolidation and stability following the Wars of the Roses. He took the crown by force and threw the death of Richard III on the battlefield. He founded the Tudor dynasty and implemented various measures to strengthen royal authority, including fiscal reforms and the establishment of the Court of Star Chamber. Henry VII's reign also witnessed expeditions, such as those led by John Cabot, laying the groundwork for English exploration and overseas expansion in the years to come. King Henry VIII's reign from 1509 to 1547 was a transformative period in English history. He is known for his six marriages, which had profound religious and political implications, leading to the break with the Catholic Church and the establishment of the Church of England. He was the second son of Henry VII. Henry VIII's reign also saw significant changes in government administration, the dissolution of the monasteries, and a shift towards centralization of power. His reign left a lasting impact on the religious, political, and social landscape of England. King Edward VI's reign from 1547 to 1553 was a brief but impactful period in English history. He was the son of Henry VIII and Jane Seymour. As a young king, he ascended the throne after the death of his father, Henry VIII. Edward VI's reign was characterized by Protestant reforms, including the introduction of the Book of Common Prayer and the promotion of Protestant doctrines. His reign, however, was cut short by his premature death leading to a succession crisis and the eventual accession of his half-sister, Mary I. Queen Mary I, also known as Bloody Mary, reigned from 1553 to 1558 and is remembered for her attempts to restore Catholicism in England. She was the daughter of Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon. Her reign was marked by the persecution of Protestants, leading to numerous executions and earning her the moniker, Bloody Mary. Despite her efforts, Mary's reign ultimately failed to secure a lasting return to Catholicism, and her death paved the way for the Protestant reign of her half-sister, Elizabeth I.
Queen Elizabeth I's reign from 1558 to 1603, known as the Elizabethan era, was a period of significant political stability, cultural flourishing, and maritime exploration. She was daughter of Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn. She is celebrated for her astute political maneuvering, religious moderation, and the defeat of the Spanish Armada. Elizabeth I's reign witnessed a golden age of literature and arts, with playwrights like William Shakespeare flourishing under her patronage. Her reign solidified England's emergence as a major European power and left a lasting impact on English history and culture. King James I and VI of Scotland's reign from 1603 to 1625 marked a significant moment in English and Scottish history, as he united the crowns of England and Scotland. He was the son of Mary Queen of Scots and Lord Darnley. He is known for commissioning the King James Version of the Bible and promoting the arts, particularly in literature and theatre. However, his reign was also marked by conflicts with Parliament and religious tensions, setting the stage for later political and religious divisions in England. King Charles I's reign from 1625 to 1649 was a period of intense political and religious strife that ultimately led to the English Civil War and his own execution. He was the son of James I and Anne of Denmark. He was embroiled in conflicts with Parliament over issues of taxation, religious practices, and the limits of royal power. Charles I's refusal to compromise with Parliament and his authoritarian rule eventually led to his downfall, marking a pivotal moment in English history and the establishment of the Commonwealth under Oliver Cromwell. Oliver Cromwell's reign as Lord Protector from 1653 to 1658 was a time of republican rule and religious reforms in England. He led the Commonwealth with an iron fist, consolidating power and enforcing a strict puritanical agenda. Cromwell's military successes and efforts to maintain order left a significant impact on English politics and society, although his rule was marked by controversy and resistance, and his death led to the eventual restoration of the monarchy. Richard Cromwell's brief reign as Lord Protector from 1658 to 1659 marked the end of the Cromwellian era and the decline of the Commonwealth. He was the son of Oliver Cromwell. He faced numerous challenges in maintaining control and lacked the strong leadership and political acumen of his father, Oliver Cromwell. Richard's reign was marked by political instability, factionalism, and ultimately led to his voluntary resignation, paving the way for the restoration of the monarchy under Charles II. King Charles II's reign from 1660 to 1685, known as the Restoration Period, brought stability and a return to monarchy after years of Commonwealth rule. He was the son of Charles I. His reign was marked by a focus on the arts, scientific advancement, and the expansion of the British Empire. However, Charles II's reign also saw religious tensions and political conflicts, such as the Exclusion Crisis, which foreshadowed future struggles between the Crown and Parliament. King James II and VII of Scotland's reign from 1685 to 1688 was a period characterized by increasing tensions between the monarchy and Parliament. He was the son of Charles I and younger brother of Charles II. His staunch Catholicism and attempts to assert absolute authority alienated the Protestant majority and led to concerns about the future of English Protestantism. These tensions culminated in the Glorious Revolution of 1688, which resulted in James II's deposition and the ascension of his Protestant daughter, Mary, and her husband, William of Orange, to the throne. The joint reign of King William III, William of Orange, and Queen Mary from 1689 to 1694 marked a significant shift in English history. Their accession to the throne followed the Glorious Revolution and the enactment of the Bill of Rights, which established a constitutional monarchy and limited the powers of the monarch. Their reign was characterized by religious toleration and the ongoing conflicts with France in the Nine Years' War. Mary's untimely death in 1694 left William as the sole ruler until his own passing in 1702, having made significant contributions to the development of constitutional monarchy in Britain. Queen Anne's reign from 1702 to 1714 was a time of significant political and cultural developments in Britain. 
she was the second daughter of James II. Her reign saw the Act of Union in 1707, which united England and Scotland into the Kingdom of Great Britain. It was also marked by military victories in the War of the Spanish Succession, as well as a flourishing of arts and literature, particularly in the realm of architecture and literature, with the rise of the Georgian style and the works of prominent writers like Jonathan Swift. King George I's reign from 1714 to 1727 marked the beginning of the Hanoverian dynasty in Britain following the Act of Settlement. He was the son of Sophia and the Elector of Hanover, and great-grandson of James I. As a German-born monarch, George I faced challenges in establishing himself as a ruler, and his reign was characterized by a growing influence of political parties, particularly the Whigs. Despite his limited grasp of the English language and disinterest in English affairs, George I maintained a stable reign and set the stage for the continued development of parliamentary government in Britain. King George II's reign from 1727 to 1760 was a period of political stability and expansion for Britain. He was the only son of George I. He successfully navigated through conflicts such as the War of Austrian Succession and the Seven Years' War, which solidified British power on the global stage. George II's reign also saw the rise of political factions, including the emergence of the modern two-party system with the Whigs and Tories, laying the groundwork for the evolving political landscape in Britain. King George III's reign from 1760 to 1820 was a time of significant political and social changes in Britain and its colonies. He was the grandson of George II. His reign encompassed the American Revolutionary War, which resulted in the loss of the American colonies, and the Napoleonic Wars, which saw Britain emerge as a dominant European power. George III's reign also witnessed the Industrial Revolution and the growth of the British Empire. However, his later years were marred by bouts of mental illness, leading to the regency of his son, George IV, in 1811. King George IV's reign from 1820 to 1830 was marked by extravagant personal indulgence and the focus on cultural refinement. He was the eldest son of King George III. He was known for his extravagant lifestyle, love for the arts, and grand architectural projects such as the Royal Pavilion in Brighton. Despite his personal excesses, George IV's reign oversaw important social and political changes, including the Catholic Emancipation Act of 1829, which granted greater rights to Catholics in Britain. King William IV's reign from 1830 to 1837 was a period of political reform and social change in Britain. He was the third child of King George III. His reign saw the passage of key legislative reforms, including the Reform Act of 1832, which expanded voting rights and reformed the electoral system. William IV's reign also witnessed the abolition of slavery in the British Empire. Though his reign was relatively short, it played a significant role in setting the stage for further political and social reforms in Victorian Britain. Queen Victoria's reign from 1837 to 1901, known as the Victorian era, was a period of immense social, cultural, and political transformation in Britain. She was the only child of Princess Victoria of Saxe-Coburg and Edward Duke of Kent, fourth child of George III. Her reign witnessed the industrialization of the nation, the expansion of the British Empire, and significant advancements in science, technology, and the arts. Queen Victoria's longevity on the throne and her embodiment of Victorian values left a lasting impact on society, shaping notions of morality, family, and gender roles. Her reign is often associated with the ideals of progress, stability, and imperial grandeur. King Edward VII's reign from 1901 to 1910, also known as the Edwardian era, was a time of transition and social change in Britain. He was the son of Queen Victoria. His reign was marked by a shift towards a more liberal and cosmopolitan society, as well as growing international tensions leading up to World War I. Edward VII's diplomatic efforts and personal charm helped improve relations with European powers and fostered a sense of stability during a time of global uncertainty. He played a significant role in shaping the modern monarchy and setting the stage for the changing political landscape of the 20th century. House of Windsor King George V 1910 to 1936. 
King George V's reign from 1910 to 1936 was a period of significant historical events and societal changes. He was the son of Edward VII. His reign encompassed World War I, the dismantling of European monarchies, and the rise of the British Empire as a global power. George V brought stability to the monarchy during a time of social and political upheaval and played a unifying role in the nation, particularly during the difficult years of war and the aftermath of the conflict. King Edward VIII's brief reign from June to December 1936 was marked by a constitutional crisis that had profound implications for the British monarchy. He was the son of George V's decision to abdicate the throne in order to marry Wallace Simpson, a twice-divorced American, created a significant controversy and led to the accession of his younger brother, King George VI. Edward VIII's abdication and subsequent life outside of the monarchy highlighted the changing attitudes towards personal relationships and the evolving role of the British royal family in the modern era. King George VI's reign from 1936 to 1952 was a time of great challenge and resilience for both the monarch and the nation. He was the son of George V. He ascended to the throne during a period of uncertainty and upheaval, with the looming threat of World War II. George VI's steadfast leadership and determination provided a source of inspiration and stability to the British people throughout the war, and his efforts to boost morale and support the war effort were widely appreciated. His reign also saw the dismantling of the British Empire and the beginnings of post-war reconstruction, making him a significant figure in British history. Queen Elizabeth II's reign from 1952 to 2022 spanned an unprecedented seven decades and witnessed significant social, cultural, and technological changes. She was the eldest daughter of King George VI and his wife Elizabeth Bowes Leon. She became a symbol of stability and continuity in a rapidly changing world. Queen Elizabeth II's reign saw the decolonization of many former British territories, the rise of the digital age, and the transformation of the monarchy into a more modern institution. Her dedication to public service and her unwavering commitment to her role as the head of state made her one of the longest reigning and most respected monarchs in British history.